the Father, Spirit, and the Son. All hail the blessed Trinity. Good evening, everybody, and a big hello to everyone. I'm going to wave to everybody tonight and say hello to everybody, and you're all so welcome tonight. As you can see below, you are very welcome to Brookborough Elam tonight, and uh, it doesn't really look like Brookborough Elam, does it? And you would be right if you thought that, because you're in my living room here, and uh, not only just try and turn my screen down a bit. And so um, you're in my living room. Uh, the church building's closed for two weeks. So we're broadcasting the church from my home over the next two weeks. And then we'll take it from there. And this again is another Sunday night. The last Sunday before December. Uh, the 29th of November. And tonight I have, who's not a guest to me. Or a, not a friend. But actually my mother is on the program tonight i feel a wee bit like your boy who does the radio show um nolan uh, i heard him interviewing his mother on his radio program earlier in the week and i thought that's a wee bit like me this week i'm interviewing my mother but well, hopefully i'm not as annoying as stephen nolan well some people feel but anyway enough about him it's great to see so many of you on with us tonight. Um, I'm operating from a new mic today. I just got this here during the week. So if someone could just let me know it's working, that would be a great help. And uh, if you're tuning in tonight, great to see 300 devices on uh, within a, the first few minutes. That's amazing. So tonight, if you're tuning in, say hello. I'm going to say hello to a number of people. And... Uh, I'll see your comments, I'll say hello, and then what I'll do is um, I'll bring mum in in a few minutes time. She's waiting, ready to go. Uh, she's in the traps, ready to get going. And we're going to hear some of her songs, God willing. And we're going to hear her story of how she came to know Jesus in her life. And I know that uh, she is well known in the county and in other counties as well. And uh, it's just great to have each of you with us tonight. So say hello and let's see who all we have with us tonight. We've got Nessie McCarl. Great to have you tonight, Nessie. Thank you for um, tuning in tonight. And Karen Balfour, uh, our, one of our regulars here on a Sunday night. There's Richard Sinton. So faithful again, Richard. Thank you. And Joy from Balna Mallard. Great to have you tonight. There is Ochna Cloy with Nigel and Jacqueline, Derek and Pearl from Lisbelaw, and Rosan from Dublin. Great to have you. Boys, there you go. There's a uh, mum's a uh, multitasking. She's also commenting there. Although 
dad does hijack her Facebook account and uh, can be commenting. And sometimes I'm looking and thinking, how on earth is mum commenting about football? And she doesn't have a clue about football. But it's actually dad. So there you go. There's Bert McMaster. Great to have you, Bert. And Elaine Vaughan from Enniskillen. And there's Diane Coulter and Cully Backey from Francis Kelly. There's Perth Scotland with Margaret. Great to have you again tonight. Balamoney. Uh, hello to Josie. And there's Mary McClatchy. Uh, thank you for your kind words. There's Glenda saying that Johnny's looking forward to it. Johnny, thumbs up to you tonight. And Johnny, hope you have two cans of Coke beside you tonight. Not one can, two cans tonight. And uh, you can keep your sister up all night tonight. There's Anne Suttle and Anne McGook and all the Anne's coming in. Great to have you. There's Linda Swindle. Hope you had a, a wee week off, Linda, from doing all the administration for the in-building uh, services. Great to have you. And there's Jenny Bowles. Jenny, great to have you. And thank you for your faithfulness um, to these online um, services. Um, folks, can I ask you to do one thing for me tonight? Um, and that is, um, as you can see below, it's saying if you could share it, that would be a great help. Uh, it's amazing to see so many of you on here tonight. Um, as it is amazing to see everybody every Sunday night. But what I'm asking you to do, goodness me, I need to do it. <laughs> uh, get your device out, whatever you're watching it on, your tablet, your... My uh, phone, PC, and click the share button down in the bottom left corner. But I bottom left corner, click the post, and that will put it on your wall and let others to come in and hear the amazing story uh, that Margaret's going to tell us tonight. So thank you to everybody who has shared it, and to those who are sharing it now, thank you so much. To those in catch up who are sharing it. We thank you all so much. I'm just going down through the comments. Thank you, everybody. Great to see all your kind comments. Great to see all different areas tuning in. Thank you. Sounds good. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, that is helpful. Uh, great to see so many of you coming in. And I always love to go back and to see all the comments, see who all's in. And what's really strange about online, I never thought this would be possible. But I think one of the things I've been proven wrong on um, during this season that we're in is actually I feel part of many people's lives who have never actually met in person. I didn't actually realise that, that online could actually be very personal. And if you were online with us this morning in our service this morning, wow. What a word from Pastor Edwin this morning. And you could actually feel the presence of God in the online, which was amazing. So if anyone ever says to me, you know, God can't work through online. Well, I have seen, actually, I have got to meet many wonderful people who have never actually met in person. as been absolutely amazing. So um, to... Everybody, if you're up for sharing it, that would be amazing. There's over 400 devices on. That is fantastic. And uh, I'll take the, the most recent comment. Joan Wiggins. Hello. Joan, great to have you tonight. As indeed, it is great to have everybody. There's Sam Bright. Great to have you, Sam. And trust you're keeping well, brother. Okay. Let's try and see if we can get Margaret in tonight. And I hope you've got your cup of tea ready, folks. Mark Stibble says she's seen miracles online. Amen. We've seen God do stuff every week. And we give God all of the praise because he is so worthy um, of all our praise. Okay, let's see if we can uh, get Margaret into the stream here. Hello, Margaret. Or should I say hello, <laughs> Mum? Hello, Nathan, and hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay? I can. I have one earpiece in and the other out that can hear myself. <laughs> and at, at your age, how's the hearing doing? Is it okay? <laughs> it's not good, son, like a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, getting old. Do you know what? People always say to me, uh, when they find out, you see, I used to think I knew a lot of people. 
Uh-huh. But then I'd start going about, and the only way I could explain who I was to people was to say, I'm Margaret Johnson's son. <laughs> and uh, then I started to realise, actually, you're a lot more well-known <laughs> than, than I am. And people always said to me, no, that couldn't be your mother. Mm-hmm. But you didn't wait too long to actually have me. I, I no, was that's such right. a great son to have. You just Absolutely. were like, we got to no. have him as soon as possible. <laughs> just so, you wait. Just you wait to hear what I'm going to say about you. <laughs> and I'd I would be say nervous to you, if I was you. I would say to you tonight, do you have your tea ready? But you don't actually drink tea or coffee. In fact, I'm being good because I know my mother's on and uh, mother's always on to me about the Coke. So right. I make a good impression in front of her. I'm on the water. <laughs> that mm-hmm. is true. You're, you're a wild woman for the Coke. Oh, Nathan, it's, too, it's t- the diet Coke. It's terrible. Aye. It really is. I need prayer. Uh, it's not the real, it's not the real, uh, as I would call it, the full fat Coke. It's the, it's the diet Coke. Yeah, absolutely. The diet Coke. <laughs> I think it's worse, actually. I think uh, there's an good. ingredient in it that isn't good for you, but everyone uh, in moderation. You. Good to see you on the water anyway. But look, we, we've tried to do this a few times because of mm-hmm. health and all of that, which we'll talk a wee bit about later on. We mm-hmm. haven't been able to do this, but it's mm-hmm. great tonight that you have the strength to be Praise with God. us um, tonight. And I seen this morning, you answered. Now, we threw out a big question this morning on our <laughs> online. And uh, if if you weren't on our online this morning and you're just tuning in tonight, you're welcome to comment and give us your answer. The question <laughs> this morning was, what is the best part of a Christmas dinner? Mm-hmm. And uh, you <laughs> said, Brussels sprouts. Sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I want to clarify something, Nathan. I have something yes. beside me. In case people say, oh, come on, Margaret, Brussels sprouts. Yep. And and Pastor Edwin McMichael is in agreement with me. Yeah. I get a yearly delivery of this. <laughs> Don't know whether anybody else gets a, a going to say broccoli. Yeah. Um, Brussels sprouts like this. And uh, Nathan always comes with a delivery. Uh, with the sprouts so that happened yesterday as a wee surprise and uh, so there you go i love sprouts um and i'll tell you he gets them from a fella um johnson um aaron johnson from lisbelaw who does home deliveries so there's a wee plug for you aaron That's and they're right. the best sprouts they're very very good i have a question though what do you like sprouts at christmas time plain uh-huh. maybe a bit of butter or with almonds and honey roasted in them Oh, goodness. Mm. Whatever so that's way just Kerry makes for... them, that's the you way I'll them. eat them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Praise God. That's well, right. there Good you go. And, and folks, if you want some of them Brussels sprouts, I'll tell you where you get them. Go to Five Mile Town on a Saturday morning and you'll see Aaron Johnson parked up there in the back car park in Five <clears> Mile <throat> Town. I'm telling you now, Good jobs, They're powerful. Good yeah. eggs. They're powerful. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you, they'll get you singing. Well. <laughs> as good as Margaret the night. Nathan, you... Nathan, you'd need a load of them then (laughs) for your singing. Anybody Uh who knows me in any way, if you go to Brook Breelam especially, you will know I did not get my mother's singing genes. Mm, You're (laughs) lucky. I'll I'll just take one or two comments here and then we'll get into more serious things tonight. There's Jenna Watts says, smoke bacon with the sprouts. Oh, lovely. Sounds Jeremy, lovely. Do you remember Jeremy Burke from down in Carrick and Shannon? Yes. The man who planted the church down there? Yeah. He says, there's no sprouts, then it's not a Christmas dinner. Here, here. <laughs> uh, Sharon, Sharon Crawford says, with bacon, yummy. Oh, bacon, yeah, lovely. <laughs> and Sam, Bright, Sam Bright says, with chorizo. Chorizo. Oh, well, that'd be lovely. I would give it a lovely. Uh, we're not as kick we're not kick. as fancy as that, Sam, here in Fermanagh. No, but no. Uh, Glenda says orange produce is first class. There you go, boys. Orange getting a quarter um, plug tonight. A quarter plug tonight. Well, anyway, um, it's great to have you on tonight, Mum. I'm really delighted to have you. Mm-hmm. Just be well behaved, please, for me tonight. I promise you don't. No have embarrassing to be stories, no. if at all possible. No, we'll try. Um, but yes, it has been real good these Sunday nights. I'm absolutely delighted tonight to have you on with us. 
Most people will know you from different places down the years singing. Um, you've been well known as well during working in Boots and different mm-hmm. places. But if you don't know who Margaret is tonight, we're going to get to know her a wee bit better. And if you do know her, maybe you will learn something about her tonight. And most importantly, you'll, you'll find out the most important part of her life, which is um, the, the one who has saved her and who she has a relationship with, the Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so we're just going to pray and then we're going Praise to God. ask the first question tonight. And so we're just going to pray. And if you're a Christian tonight, why don't you just pray as well with us in your home? Father, tonight we thank you for this amazing opportunity to come online with so many people and to talk about Jesus, to talk about you, Lord. God, we pray tonight, Lord, whatever false Jesus people have come across, we pray that your real identity tonight, God, will be seen, that you're a God of compassion and love. You're a God who can save not just people that look good, but you can save anybody. God, we pray tonight, Lord, whoever is listening, whatever yes, place they find themselves in, they may be in a good time or they may be in a difficult mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. We pray tonight, Lord, that every person tonight will go to bed knowing that they have Jesus in their life Amen. and they'll go away encouraged. <coughs> in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can I say one thing? I hate doing this. Katie, Katie's watching this on the TV screen and I can hear it. So, Katie, if you could just lower... The TV screen down, please, because I can hear everything. It's sort of putting me off. <laughs> there you, you go. Katie. This is the this is the beauty of live, folks. So it is. <laughs> is and actually, what reminds me, I have the baby Thanks. monitor on beside me. Oh my goodness! This is what you call Nathan live. This is you raw. see that thing there. Oh. <laughs> that is an awful wee thing there because it makes the crying seem. Ten worse. times worse than what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to switch it off here. I'll Are tell you, gonna... Nathan, we didn't need no baby monitor when you cried anyway as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have heard you for my... <laughs> well, look, I'm going to hand over to you for a few minutes here. Um, tell us a wee bit about yourself tonight, Margaret. Okay. Tell us where were you brought up. Tell us a bit about your childhood. And mm-hmm. uh, were you a good child? Or were I was. You bad know that. <laughs> I'll hand over to you and I'll come back on. Okay, no problem, Nathan. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, it's lovely to join you here tonight and to share some of my story. I'm just trusting that what I say will glorify my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who I love so much and is just my life. I was brought up in a village, a two mile outside Brutbra, uh, a village a village called Brutbra, and I lived about two miles outside it, called Grath Keeland. And my life, I can honestly say I had a happy child life. I had a ch- happy childhood. Um, I was brought up with uh, my mum and dad, and I was brought up with Joy, the eldest of the family, then Yvonne, Robert, and myself. So I was the baby of the family. They say I was spoilt, but I don't think I was, was I? But... Um, I was brought up in a, a Christian home and um, where my parents loved the Lord. And the Lord was just the center of our family life. The Lord had first place. If anything happened in our home, we brought it to the Lord in prayer. If there was a problem, we prayed about it. If there was somebody sick, we came together as a family and we prayed about it. So even in the good times, we laughed. We had we had good times, but we brought God into it all. So that was kind of my upbringing. As for me, my hobbies was dolls. I just loved dolls, doll mad. If I had a doll in a pram, I was happy. And um, so I was quite happy playing, playing with my sisters and brother, but also a lot on my own. Um, so I couldn't really escape the gospel being brought up in a Christian home. And mum and dad was involved a lot in children's work. And mummy done a lot of preaching in her time and taking missions with a lady called Heather Colvin, who's went on to be with the Lord. But mum and dad was involved in children's work. Um, Mummy was involved in CEF. And dad and her, we didn't have Sunday school in those days, so dad and mum run at Sunshine Corner and um, had a team around them. So this was my life. You went on a Tuesday to prayer meetings. 
you went to church on Sunday morning, you went to church on Sunday night, and any meeting in between. And I can honestly say I had no problem going to these places because that was my life. I knew nothing else. The Lord was 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 our life, and that was it. So as a child, um, that's what I can remember. Uh, coming up to Christmas, I've got to tell you just a bit of a funny story. It's coming up to Christmas, and I want to just say this if I have time. Uh, living in a house with four children, per mum and dad, per mum and dad, and coming up to Christmas time, they had went to Home Cash and Carry and bought two massive big boxes of Christmas crackers for the Sunshine Corner Christmas party, children's party. And they put them down in the bedroom and said, kids, don't touch them. That's for the party. So that was okay. Um, we had a couple of nights with them in one of the bedrooms. And one of the nights then, Yvonne and Joy, who shared a room, and I shared a room with Robert, they came down to our room and says, here, what about opening one cracker just to see what's in it? So to make the long story short, we opened up the box and they got the cracker. <laughs> and Joy, of course, her and Yvonne being the oldest, we'll do the, this one. We're going to crack it. And then Robert and Margaret, you can read it. So there they pulled it and opened it. Well, then me and Robert was in rumpus because we hadn't opened one. So we, we then got one and opened it. Do you want to know something? We went through 200 crackers. We cracked and we cracked and we cracked the tube. We were surrounded in jokes, paper and everything till our door opened. Ma Daddy came in and he shouted, come quick, Carol. Look what the kids have done. Now, in our house, the only thing you feared was Daddy's eye. Daddy had a twitch in his eye when he was cross. And uh, we seen the twitch going and we knew what that meant. We were for it. And uh, I can say the others got smacked, but I didn't because Daddy said, what was it to do with Margaret? She's too young. And I was probably the biggest culprit. So this is the sort of thing we got up to as kids in our home. But praise God to be brought up and have the privilege of being brought up, Nathan, in a Christian home. Amazing. Amazing. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. thank the Lord that uh, what's my nan and granda, they're mm -hmm. still alive mm -hmm. and they're still praying for many Prayer. people mm -hmm. and being a witness uh, to many people. And so I guess um, you grew up in a Christian home. You had mm -hmm. heard the Christian message. Mm -hmm. um, but what point was it you decided yourself? Because we know tonight that having a Christian parent will not get us to heaven. Whenever no. we face god he'll not say oh your parent was a christian so you're going right. to come into heaven yeah but what point was it that you yourself decided i'm going to give my life to jesus yeah that's very true what you say nathan because i was brought up in it um it didn't make me ready for heaven and i was young and i knew about jesus i'd heard a uh, in, in in the clubs i'd heard a church that jesus saves and i knew it all but I had never thought of it as in me needing Jesus until he revealed himself to me. It was three months of my seventh birthday. It was in May. And uh, I was in uh, a CF meeting at Mum Run with a lady, Edie Skelly, that goes to our church, a dear lady. And um, it was in Tempo. And um, Mummy was telling the story, but I could not tell you what the story was about. Um, I was actually acting, acting in the cod really and, and being disruptive and trying not to let mommy see me. And as I was doing that, this voice as clear came to me and into my conscience or whether it was into my soul and said, Margaret, if I was to come today, where would you be? And I mean, that just made me sit up. Where am I going? And I recognized that it was the Lord. I had no mistake that this was the very first time I actually knew that I needed my sins forgiven. I needed the Savior to come into my life if I was ever going to be ready for heaven. Now, as soon as that voice had, had stopped, you see, there's an enemy of the soul. There's an enemy wanting to get your soul to be where he is. And the fight was on. And he said, after the Lord had spoke, the enemy of my soul said, what sin have you got, Margaret? For goodness sake, come on, you're so young. Tell you what, you live your life. And whenever you're older, come to the Lord. You just come then and ask for forgiveness. But you don't have anything to ask forgiveness for. And that is what he put into my spirit was that 
negative. And, and you know what it is? The devil's so cunning. He wasn't saying, I hate you, Margaret. I want your soul because I'm bringing you to hell. He came in telling me that I was a lovely girl, telling me even to come to the Lord. But at a later stage, and how would I know if I'd ever have another opportunity where the Lord would come and speak to me personally, where I could say, Lord, come into my life. And I thank God the battle began, but the victory was won at Calvary. So the battle was on, but the victory was won by the blood. And I do thank God that he gave me the strength to go up to Edie Skelly. And I was crying, and I was only coming seven. I was crying with tears of repentance that I needed the Lord Jesus Christ. And Edie read John 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him, they shall not perish but have everlasting life. And we can say that so flippantly, for God so loved the world. If you were to think of that, for God so loved the world. That's you and that's me tonight. But then she said, for God so loved Margaret. You see, he's a personal God. That he gave his only begotten son, that if Margaret should believe in him, Margaret shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So I trusted the Lord. I repeated a simple prayer of forgiveness. And I can honestly say that whenever I had said amen, I didn't know that I had a burden of sin. I didn't know I carried that sin till it was revealed. And whenever I said amen, it was as if somebody lifted that rucksack that was filled with bricks and stones and it lifted. I literally felt the burden of sin being lifted off by Jesus. He's a wonderful saviour. He is wonderful. And it was made possible by Calvary because Jesus took my sin. He took your sin on the cross. And because of that, I was set free. And it was a journey. It was a journey. It was a journey I was starting out in life. And I had a wee saying, and I've used many a time, life didn't start when I was born. But life started for me when I was born again and born into God's family. Hallelujah. Just to be born again, to ex accept the Savior and just be received into his family. I belong to God now to think that he's my heavenly father and I can come to him and he loves me and he has accepted me and he has kept me to this day. And going through primary school, Nathan, it was very much like childhood faith. That's what all I could describe it as. Very simple. I said a prayer, I'm going to heaven and I lived a good wee life. And that's all I seen it as. I went through high school. Again, you maybe have a bit more understanding who Jesus was. You probably had a bigger stand to do in high school that they knew you were a Christian and you tried to stay clear of what you knew was wrong. But I would honestly say it wasn't until my late teens that my thoughts upon Jesus, it deepened into a deep relationship of love and dependency on him. And especially when I got married, as you'll hear later on, that's whenever I really grew in my faith because he, there's so much to know about Jesus, so much to know about this wonderful God. And he's not a God. He's the only God because he's alive. You can go to stones, you can go to crosses, you can go to whatever you turn to, but they're not alive. God rose from the dead and he's alive and he loves you today and he loves me. And so um, that's when my relationship deepened, Nathan, was whenever I was on in teens. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. And uh, praise God for Edie Skelly. Uh, oh, who, uh, she's, still, she's still on the go. She's mm -hmm. still on the go. It's and still a blessing. I was chatting her yesterday on the phone. She gave me a phone call yesterday. And I'll tell you, she <clears> really <throat> blessed me listening to her. She was yeah. she was telling me, don't give up, Nathan. Keep on oh, going with God. God. She's a firebrand. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just want to say at this point, you know, you got uh, saved. You asked Jesus into your life as a child. And I just really felt as you were saying that, that there's somebody listening tonight mm -hmm. who gave their life to Jesus as a child. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the journey of life, mm -hmm. life has crept in. You haven't meaningfully walked away from God, but mm -hmm. you know tonight you're happened. nowhere near God. Yeah. 
But I want to really encourage you tonight that God wants to restore to you again mm -hmm. that walk with him. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you tonight that childlike faith you once had. He That's is right. calling Praise you back God. tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Thank just really Jesus. feel that for Jesus. somebody They once it was a child. They were mm -hmm. when a child they asked Jesus in their life would have walked away. Tonight is your night to come back. That's right. Come back. The father's arms are open wide. He's not That's wanting right. to beat you. He's wanting to welcome you back mm -hmm. in. Well, Margaret, you started to uh, get more involved in music. Yeah. Um, and what we're going to do now, uh, before we actually talk a wee bit about how your uh, musical life began and um, where did it all come from, um, we're going to play a song for everybody tonight. Okay. Now, um, <laughs> it's a big week this because uh, mum is releasing her, is this your fifth album? This is my fifth album, yeah. See that? See? Mm -hmm. uh, you're good, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is uh, the fifth album tonight, which is called I Will Serve Thee. And it is only hot off the press. Now, yes. last night, I went round to record a few of them. I didn't want to put mum under too much pressure to sing them live on the programme. I went round last night with my phone and recorded a few of them. And uh, so uh, the CD, this might not do the CD the most no. justice in the world. Uh, can but... I say, yes, can I say Roy Rainey, who yeah. has recorded me, has done a fabulous job. This is first take and raw. But I yes. want you to be blessed by the words and be encouraged. So do you want to introduce our first song for tonight? Yes, it's um, He Walks Beside Me. And um, basically, I couldn't walk without the Lord hand in hand. So yes, here we so go. You go. This, this is a wee bit of a foot tapper, hand clapper. Yes. I'll not and, say what uh, Nathan was doing in the living room. He, done a, he did do a wee dance. A wee jig. A wee, a wee, a wee, a wee COVID-friendly jig. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, yeah. so this is uh, He Walks Beside Me. Enjoy this, folks, and then we're going to hear a wee bit about um, the music side of Margaret's life. Enjoy. <laughs> Jesus. 
Well, great song, great yeah. song, and uh, it's sort of got that country gospel feel to it. Feel to it. Um, and so that's a uh, that's the opening track of the new CD, I think. Yes, that's the opening one. Yeah. That's the opening track, and that gives you a wee bit of a flavour. Well, um, look, Margaret Day, uh, tell us a wee bit about. So a lot of people on here tonight will maybe know you through uh, the music world and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so tell us a wee bit how all that begun and a wee bit of the journey uh, with music. Yeah, um, I, I suppose um, there was always music in our house. Um, I'm going to say I claim our talents from my mum. I'm sorry, Dad, but it's mother who was born a Welsh and then eventually moved to London. So there was Welsh blood in her. And the Welsh are known to be good singers. And uh, so there was always music in our house. Um, we were brought up with the Gaithers singing. Every Sunday morning, Dad would um, they'd wake up to Dad having the, the Gaithers running. And um, so there was always pianos. There was guitars, banjos, accordions, drum kit, recorders, you name it. Um, we did enjoy music nights in our home. And then because we brought everyone to God in prayer, we really felt that we should form a singing group. Um, my mum and my two sisters and me, we were singing as we often did and lovely harmonies came in and we really felt and we prayed about it and waited for confirmation that we should go around singing of God's love and sing the gospel in churches and concerts and stuff. So um, I actually um, think the Reverend Fred Greenfield is in and many's a good night we had, um, we just called ourselves the Coulter family, and many's a good night we had with the Reverend Fred Greenfield and his wife up in their church. We traveled near and far, Nathan. Those years were, were a blessing, um, really were, because they kept us together as a family. Um, and then dad would drive us and Robert would sit beside father. Robert never joined us. I think it's because he can't sing. But um, yeah, those were very, very good years and i thank god for them i thank god for the talent that he has given us but he's the reason of the song if you have a song in here it's going to come out so we traveled near and far we did nathan and that's how it started was just in the family home very good and uh, um sorry i was expecting you to talk longer there well the thing about <laughs> it is yes whenever whenever we got married um it was really really difficult to um Really difficult to get practice in the way we wanted to. Um, me and Marion, a policeman, he was on duty, different duties. So with having mm -hmm. children and stuff, we just couldn't practice, Nathan. So unfortunately, that came, that yes. season, I call that a season, it ended. But I then branched out on my own. Me and the good old accordion branched out. Yes. And I got to many missions and churches and meeting a lot of people. I will say, us as a family, it wasn't just going around singing. It was a ministry, mm -hmm. a ministry right. for the Lord. And the opportunity you get and that we did mm -hmm. get as a family to pray with people to pray with people that was maybe lonely had problems right. had needed encouragement somebody that was sick and just to come and pray with mm -hmm. them um this was precious and even lead people to the lord uh, it's it's amazing and That's god so will use if you're willing god will use that you That's might right. say i can't sing but you can pray you can you can talk about the lord that's right. And um, he'll have different gifts for different people, but we went down the singing avenue. So true. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, as I look back on my, my own life and growing up in the home, um, I can say that worship to you and worshiping God and singing mm -hmm. to God wasn't something that, that was a Sunday thing to you. I remember many times I'd be coming home and I'd hear, hear you either on the accordion or on the piano, mm -hmm. and you could be singing to God. And uh, just to give you a bit of an insight here, folks, you could be singing to God for for hours. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be at one o'clock in the morning, you'd hear the singing going mm -hmm. and then the singing would lead into prayer. It was. And, and it was as if, and as I look back in my life, it was as if God was literally, as as I know now, he was in the room with you. Yeah. But it was so real to you that when you're mm -hmm. singing, it's like you and God are in the room. That's right. And Having fellowship with, with, with each other. Exactly. Yeah. And and so 
I seen what it was to really see someone who worshipped God, mm -hmm. who wasn't just worshipping when everyone was looking, but also worshipping uh, on your own. And worship, I guess, has been something that's probably brought you through many difficult times, times I would have known you were going yeah. through maybe a difficult time yeah. and you would have just went away to the dining room where the piano mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. and you'd That's be right. singing away, just mm -hmm. singing on yeah. to God mm -hmm. and sometimes would even give you a song to write. Absolutely. Um, it has been such a strength to me. Mm. Um, people will evolve. People say, what sort of music do you like, Margaret? I like, I'm not against any music, um, but 99.9999 percent i listen to the gospel music the praise mm. the worship um solo artist groups as long as it's glorifying god it does something it, it connects it connects you to the lord you see the enemy hates praise to the lord that's right he hates it but with yeah. praise comes breakthrough that's with right. praise chains are loosed Amen. it sets your spirit free i've even seen me maybe on a down day Again, you'll hear later on, with, with, due to problems, due to sickness, due to life. Mm -hmm. We all go through trials. Life isn't always easy. Yes. And do you see just to get alone with God or fill the house with singing, yes. with worship unto the Lord? It mm -hmm. lifts the atmosphere. It That's lifts right. the heaviness. And again, I love the Lord. Praise is a big part of my life because, as you say, Nathan, it leads into praying. I've seen me even on the accordion, and I'll be mm. singing. And then I'm actually praying to God. God will right. bring people into my heart, and I'm praying mm. for them. I don't know what I'm praying, but God knows. But I'm lifting them up before the Lord, and it's, yes. it is important. Praise right is wonderful to it jesus definitely He's helps, worthy. Though, it definitely helps when you can sing in tune because <laughs> I, I, I do try it i do try it and it, it, oh, there's been the odd prayer meeting and i have tried to start a song and <laughs> you're on the piano at the back and you're trying to find the key what on earth has he started that in and glenda crawford sometimes there lisa they love them all well, they're trying well, to find what Nathan, key. Be behind your back me and Lisa and Glenda to be looking at each other. Who's uh, going to go on the hot seat and try and pick this tune up? But Nathan, whenever we were a, a family singing, we had the privilege of making a wee cassette. It was a wee tape of Joy, oh. Yvonne, me and my mother. And uh, it was called The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power. Yes. And that was done with Mildred and Roy Rainey. They lived in Portadown, Craig Avon area. Yes. And... Uh, it, the tapes in them days was the whole thing. But believe it or not, that was about, gosh, Nathan, that could be 29 years ago. And about six years ago, God brought Roy across my path again after all those years. And I couldn't believe it. And I knew that was confirmation that Roy had to do a CD for me, which That's was right. the last one. And he's now done this one. And uh, yeah. you see, working with Roy, if you want to really know what Jesus is like, yeah. You stay a day with Roy yeah. and Mildred. They're yes. just a prime example of the love of God. That's it beams right. out of him. And, and he's Roy's, not boring. He's a good Roy's, Roy's daughter and son-in-law, yeah. they planted a Coleraine Vineyard Church. That's right. Um, and are seeing God do amazing things. Well, yeah. let's... Uh, she wrote fast. a very good song as well, Not Stopping You. If I could remember, she wrote a fantastic she song. Did. Uh, a worship song that we all sing. Yes, it was a Jesus be you know, was it Jesus be the center or oh, what was the I'm song? afraid of saying yeah. it wrong. Yeah. It'll come right. to me. I'll right. have it before the end. Joanne Ho says praise lifts the spirit of heaviness. Absolutely. Amen. Praise and, God. Uh, we agree with that. Well, tell us about the first song you wrote. Uh, very first and, song uh, and I know time's gone, so I have to be quick or it's going. I hope you have the twelve o'clock tonight, folks. Um very first song I wrote uh, was about, believe it or not, about 20 years ago, someone in the family died across the water and I couldn't make the funeral. And um, I was saddened about it. And I just got, when I knew the funeral was going on, I was just praying that God would help and undertake. And he just gave me words, I was playing on the organ again, music. And he gave me words, he is there for you so tenderly. And I am there for you with arms open wide. I am there for you just to feel my warm embrace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being there. 
and mm -hmm. it was into a song. So I recorded it on my first album, actually. Mm -hmm. And I realized then that the Lord had give, enabled me to be able to write songs. So later on then, my songs came, Nathan, through situations, through trials, through happy times. It could be through a downtime. It could be another situation that I have been faced with. And God gave me pen, mm. put pen to paper, and he gave me the words and the tune. And I recorded a full album, actually, of the songs God had given me. Wow. So on this on this new one, God gave me three songs. And they're, they're actually upbeat, but um, the Victories one is one of them. And um, one about the blood. So, yeah, there's three Very of them. Good. but. Brilliant. Well, look here. There, there, there must be a few you on tonight, nearly as old as yourself, because Why? Sandra <laughs> Marshall <laughs> says that Davy still has that tape. Oh my goodness! And uh, there you go. There oh you my go. Goodness, dear, love you. It's still around then. <laughs> well, look here. Uh, on a on a more serious note, uh, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, Dad was uh, in the police and. Uh, you you got married very young. You got married at seventeen. You were crazy. I, I know. Um, so were they tell me, but two <laughs> children by nineteen or twenty, Tw whatever no, it was. Twenty. Like, twenty. They're your pure madness. Uh -huh. So it was. Oh well, but, this uh, is like Nathan, uh, and the worst was having you. <laughs> aye, I met but, I met Nathan. Adrian's family came to Brook Breelam when I was nine, and um, their family and our family became great friends. And yeah. I struck a, a happy a friendship with Eddie. Me and him just clicked. He kept the crack going and I just laughed at his silly jokes. So that developed, when I was 15, that developed into a relationship. Confirmation, too long to go into the story and I don't embarrass you or him. Uh, but we then set up home in Rich Hill. I said I'd never marry a farmer or a policeman. I married a policeman. And because of that, I moved away from home, set up home in Rich Hill and then had you when I was 19 and um, took a lot of grace from the Lord to rear you, Nathan, I'll tell you. <laughs> Folks, if that's what he's like now, what was he not like when he was five and 15? But then I had Rebecca when I was 20, and then I had Katie whenever I was 29. And it was a, it was a journey. Being married to a policeman was difficult. Back then, Nathan, the days were uncertain. You literally lived from day to day. And I can remember there was a bomb. Um, two things I'm just going to pull out of being when I was married. I had the joy as well of bringing you and Rebecca, your sister, after church one Sunday. Eddie was on duty and we were just talking about the love of Jesus. Mm. And we led you, I led you to the Lord. That's right. And then I led Katie to the Lord. I'll never forget it. That's right. And, uh, but being married, um, there was a bomb in Rich Hill where we lived. And Eddie was stationed in Kede. And... Um, it made me very scared of being on my own in the house uh, when the bomb went off in Rich Hill. And not long after that, Eddie was in night duty again. And I fell asleep with the light on in the hall at the be a wee light just coming in through the bottom of the door. And I woke up in pure darkness. Mm. And I can tell you, I was petrified. This is before I had children, Nathan. I was still, I was probably about 18 at this, at this time, away from home in a house um, all on my own, not knowing had somebody got into my house. Was there somebody in the house looking for Adrian? Was there people outside? For outside was pitch black. And to make the long story short, I want to explain in this testimony that God is the God of the small detail in your life as well as the big detail. That's right. And I had a wee um, torch, a wee small wee pocket thing that me and Eddie had bought a couple of pounds and I knew the batteries was done, didn't replace them. And they were sitting, it was sitting in the drawer in the cabinet beside my bed. And I knew it wasn't working. And I literally could hear my heart beating. I was that scared. Mm -hmm. And this voice came to me and said, get the, the, the torch out. It's working. I argued with that voice. I knew it was the Lord. I says, it's not working. I'm not moving. I'm too scared. It's not working. Mm -hmm. The voice again said, get it out. Trust me. It's working. I said, I'm not scared. And I'm in pitch black. And I wasn't talking out. I was too scared. Yeah. It was my heart and my mind talking to God. It's not working. It's not working. He said for the third time, get it out. Trust me, it's working. Third time I rejected. Lay there in silence and my heart was getting heavier. And I just plucked up the courage to get my hand out of the bed. Didn't know what I was going to feel, you see. 
got the torch out and I brought it up in darkness and it was a wee flip one. Nathan, I flipped that torch and the light came on. Mm. Now that to somebody else would be going, oh, it's fluke, oh, so what was a bit of darkness? I can tell you, mm. the Lord shone that torch for me, as That's small right. as it was. It was enough to lighten up and take away the darkness. Yes. And I ran down the stairs petrified. Mm. I says, I have to ring 80 to come home. Rang the police station, says, it was 80 they answered. I even got him and he said, Mikey, I can't come home, Pet, because I'm SDO, which was, you're in charge of the whole controls and the phones. The rest of the boys are out. Yes. He says, you light candles now, Maggie, and you get back up to your bedroom and I'll be home soon. And I'll stay on the phone until you do it. So that's what happened. Uh, I said goodbye, I went up to the bedroom. And once I got used to the candles, I turned the wee torch off, put it back in. I'm saying all this to say the next morning I got up, I never thought a thing about it, son. And then it came to me, try the torch. Mm. And I crept in quiet because Eddie was sleeping. And I got that torch out mm. and I turned it around and there was no light. Mm. And that spoke to me that God is interested in every detail. Folks, Amen. if you don't know this Savior, he mm. loves you so much. He will be there. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, no matter Amen. how bad your life may seem. And you might be here listening and saying, you know, it reminded me, Nathan, of the light of God shining in yes. to a sinner's life, the way it did with me when I was just nearly seven. Don't reject and be like me arguing with God. No, it's not working. The light Amen. is working. It's the Amen. day of mercy. Yes. And if he's shining into your heart, don't say no. Yes. Receive the light. It'll take away the darkness and you'll have mm. true relationship with Christ. Yeah. You'll have a joy. He came to me with his peace that night, Nathan. He came to me with a torch that wasn't working for a year and he shone it up. And that was him saying, Margaret, I am mm. with you. Hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful? Praise He's a Lord. lovely saviour. I love him <laughs> so much, Nathan. Yeah. He's just means so much to me. The mm. other thing was um, in... The 8th of March, and I know time is gone. The 8th of March, 1993, this is the God of the Big, there was a mortar attack on Kedi, on the army and police um, base where AD was stationed. I'd said goodbye to him that morning. He was on an early shift. We were now living in Lisbon, and I had you and Rebecca. And um, it came on the news that there had been a mortar attack in Kedi. You can imagine hearing that. In them days, was no, there was no phones, no mobiles. Mm. I rang the station, couldn't get through. There was panic. There was, oh my goodness. I can't describe how I felt that day, Nathan. Not knowing if Eddie was dead or alive or yes. how many was dead. Yeah. And I thank God, um, to make this long story short, I gathered you on one knee and Rebecca in the other. And we just prayed to God for all of the mm. men prayed for daddy to be safe. And I would have had yeah. to accept whatever God had planned for our lives. But I praise God that mm. Adrian was kept safe. He was kept safe. Yes. But that day was dark. And what I'm trying to say is, I don't know how I would have coped if mm. I hadn't the Lord Jesus. You see, he's not just my savior. He's mm. my friend beside me. He's mm. my comforter. He's yes. my provider. He's yes. my shelter in the time of storm. And I don't know how people cope. I honestly mm. don't know how they cope in life without the Savior Jesus Very who true. is there. And he, he gave me his peace that day. And Eddie mm. did then come home. He got one phone call. I must add this. What do you hear? He had one chance of a phone call that day. Who did he ring, Nathan? Uh, probably phoned his mother. He rang his mother, Ivy Johnson, yes. <laughs> and she then was to pass he's the a, message to me. He's a mommy's boy at well, heart. Mommy. <laughs> he's a mommy's boy at heart, so and yes. you know, Ivy rang me, and she had rung me about 10 times that day. She says, Ivy, please stop ringing, because every time I think it's, it's Adrian. And yeah. um, this time she rang and says, Ivy, of great news, he's safe. Praise God, and we were rejoicing. Whenever she dropped the phone, I went, what? You rang your mother? But he, he, he knew that she was older and was quite a panicker so there you yes. go i forgive him i forgive well, him. i'm sure i am sure like we could honestly be here oh nathan uh, story after story of how god has answered prayer mm -hmm. and you know folks we heard an amazing message this morning yeah, about a god right. who answers prayer 
-hmm. he doesn't always answer it how we want no, he not always. but i'll tell you now we focus on those times that he has came through for us mm -hmm. and i know the world would say oh, that's a coincidence or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i'm telling you now whenever you stand before god one day you'll say whoa mm -hmm. there is a god there's a god and he is interested and margaret we're going to play your second song before we talk about, about a wee bit sickness. of how you have journeyed with mm -hmm. um an illness the over the yeah. last few years but we'll play a wee song before we just go into that last part yeah what song do you want us to play this song i'd like is um you're not alone this is a very old song um but i think it's going to be coming back uh, up again just listen to the words you're not alone jesus yeah. is with you enjoy this song and we'll be back with the final part Praise God. Wonderful song. You're oh, not alone. It. You're not alone. And Margaret, you have needed to know that over the last few years because your your health got a real hit over mm -hmm. the last few years. Mm -hmm. And it's great that you have the strength tonight to be on with us. Um, 
But maybe you would like to just speak a wee bit about how that journey has been and how God has brought you this far, even with uh, My that difficulty. Yeah. yeah. Life was going good and I wasn't in like a sp spiritual low or spiritual high, as one would say. I was pretty normal. I've always tried to be a level running person. And I, on the Christmas evening, 2016, I took a severe pain. And um, I thought when I had pain here, um, a mild pain, it was like a high heat of hernia. So I didn't pass any remarks, but this one night it was doubling me over. So the early hours of boxing morning, um, I had to go into hospital and they admitted me. And to make the whole story shorter, um, they kept me and took my gallbladder out. And um, I thought I was doing great. It was wonderful. I got home New Year's Eve. And a um, few days after that, when I got home, my body started to do um, unusual movements. And this continued on. And um, it was only like for a few minutes. It was like my head had started to go over, it'd be that side to one side and um, for about two minutes. And I couldn't control to bring it back or keep it still. And I thought this was bizarre, but I didn't say Andy because his father was already in hospital. And um, that was all right. Uh, the next thing, um, it would be my whole body was contorting over. And um, then obviously it was becoming where I had to mention it. I couldn't take it anymore. So 80 then, one evening it was that bad because I was contorting over. I was just freezing uh, my muscles and hitting out. And so Eddie says, we'll go up to the doctor. He brought me up to out of ours. And then he needed a second opinion, the doctor did. And I was brought back over then to A&E. And there I was admitted. Um, they didn't know what was wrong with me at all. Um, and whenever I woke up the next morning, I couldn't talk. And I progressively got worse uh, to the point I couldn't walk. And now I couldn't talk. And I was taking seizures. Again, the professional people didn't see this before in Enniskillen, so they were, I suppose, doing all tests that they could. I had an MRI test and um, it came back clear. So because of that, they sent me home. But I continued to take these seizures. The eyes would lock in the back of my head. My head would go violently shaken and my whole muscles to the very part of my ankles would be up and contorted. And um, these could last anything from two minutes till an hour. My worst was two hours. And then after that, I would have like tremors for the rest of the day. I couldn't speak, as I said, and I needed um, help to um, do anything. I couldn't stand on my own. I was basically like a puppet on a string. Every limbs was just like this. And so um, that was okay. Eddie then had to assist me to wash. He had to do everything in the house because with it comes severe fatigue. And um, I thank God that Eddie was in a position, he's retired, that he was able to look after me. For the first full year, I was behind the house, uh, behind the house, in the house, and um, things really wasn't getting better. Um, after I had been, my operation then readmitted, four months later, uh, the seizure was that bad that I was rushed to hospital into resuscitation room. And there they obviously give me something to settle my whole nervous system. And um, I, I was knocked out basically till the next day. But how we were feeling, it was very, very scary, Nathan, to think that a body could be well, had an operation, a normal routine operation, but something go wrong. I have been healthy all my life never in hospital bar to have children. And here, I, I, my whole body was closing down and um, it was frightening. All I can say, it was frightening. And um, whenever you were on your own in the hospital, say Eddie went home for an hour, it was you and God. And I had two choices to either give up on God and just say, that's it, God. Is that all you, your love goes for me? Is that all you think of me? What have I done to deserve this? Or I could have took it, though you slay me, yet I will trust you. And that's where music came in, Nathan. Music and praise and worship to the Lord is what carried me through. I was given, I think it's an, an Irish orchestra 
um, CD. I actually received two of them as gifts when I wasn't well. And there was a song, What the Enemy Means for Evil. He is working for my good. And if God is for you, listen, that's all you need. His love surrounded me in the hospital. He gave me his peace. Psalm 103 became my favorite um, psalm in those days of trial. I felt for my mother um, because I didn't like mommy seeing me like this with a child not communicating, limbs moving. Um, it was a pathetic um, sight to behold, Nathan. And um, I felt for my mother. I really did. And because um, I knew my mum and dad was putting on a brave face, as all my family members. To make the long story short, when I was readmitted the next time that time they rushed in, uh, they got a neurologist on board and I had to get an EEG in the brain. Meanwhile, they were treating me for epilepsy and um, God was keeping me. God had his hand. He knew everything about it. And uh, I did get a diagnosis long after. I'm speeding it up. One of the times I will say um, was precious was um, I thought Eddie had went on to church one Sunday when I was in. I said, go to church and come then and see me. And when church was on, my door opened and it was Adrian. And I can say it was one of the most special times that we have had with the Lord Jesus together. He brought the communion. He brought uh, the bread and the, the red juice in. And there we could sit together in the hospital as much as I missed being with my brothers and sisters in church and worshiping God together as a complete family in Christ. But God was still there with me and Eddie. And we prayed together, we wept together, we worshiped together, we broke bread and remembered the Lord's goodness, his death, his resurrection and uh, his salvation. So that was a really um, precious time that I'll never forget in hospital. Another one was I was the time I had to go for the MRI scan. Um, I was moving. I couldn't keep still. I was quite weary that day. And I just said, come on, Lord, how am I going to keep still in this MRI? And um, just at that, God had the right person in place. And I heard my phone ping and I lifted it. And it was a verse in Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And you know, it was mighty because to me, it was. It, this is how I would have interpreted it. Don't panic. Don't panic, Margaret, for I am with you. There's no need to fear for I'm your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. I'll keep a firm grip on you with my righteous right hand. God had people in place, Nathan, for the right thing. It's a season I'm going through. And then I did get better. I got a, a diagnosis, which I'll tell you now. Um, it's a season I'm in. I know I am going to get better. It's a... It's a a functional disorder, neurological functional disorder that has been told I have to live with. It won't kill me, but I have to live with it. But I reject that. I don't accept that I have to live with this. I believe in a God of the impossible. I believe he's a miracle working God and I do not have to live with it. If it's a season, I will bear it. And, and as it is nearly suffering with Christ, because if we had sunshine, in our lives all the time, we wouldn't, our, yeah, sunshine, we wouldn't appreciate, you know, I'm reversing that. If we had rain, we need the rain to appreciate the sunshine. If we hadn't trials, we wouldn't strengthen ourselves in the Lord. It's through trials where we are strengthened. Our character is shaped to who God wants us to be. We become completely stripped. I was stripped of everything, Nathan. I couldn't go out and sing. I couldn't attend church. I couldn't do life. I couldn't meet with people because it's so in your face. My symptoms are so in your face. And I says, God, why? At the beginning, I says, God, why? And you might be out there saying, God, why? But let me tell you, God is there. We have to live life. We are not promised an easy road. 
You might think I'll come to the Lord and my problems will be over. Well, they'll not. Because this is life. It's because of sin that we have all these problems and sickness. It's not because of the Lord. But the Lord permitted me in this season to go through it, to shape my character, to see, Margaret, though I chase after you and slay you, will you trust me? Will you still love me or will you give up? Maybe today you have disappointments. Maybe people have let you down today. Maybe you're looking at some Christian who isn't living up to what they're saying they are. Can I tell you, get your eyes off people and get your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you today. He wants to take the disappointment. He wants to take your, your valley of sickness. He wants to take your wrecked and ruined life that you think you're hopeless. That What have I to offer? God wants to take all as you are and he'll give you fulfillment. He'll give you a joy in your soul that will give you that satisfaction that he is with you. He wants to help you. He wants to save you. He wants to encourage you today that you're not alone. If you give your life to him, you're not alone. It might not be an easy road, but you have a friend that goes with you. I couldn't have done this, this sickness without the Lord. He's been by my side, as that song says. I haven't been alone. There's times that I have felt low. There's times that I have cried to God. There's times I've said, God, why? But praise God, he's no disappointment. He has carried me through. There's been times that I've seen one set of footprints, and that's when the Lord has carried me in his arms. It hasn't been easy, folks. This sickness is still going on. In lockdown, um, I've only come out, I'm 12 days, if I have my counting right, I'm 12 days after a three-month bout of this condition. To give you a wee insight before I close, this condition, the neurologist, this condition, I wrote them down. Some of the things that I suffer is balance problem in walking. When it hits me out of nowhere, and I said to the neurologist, is it the operation that caused this? He couldn't say it was for obvious reasons. People would claim, but he didn't rule it out. And I know it's, it's, it's strange how I've been healthy and I had an operation and then I went wrong. And the way the neurologist explained it, for those that are listening or maybe has a sickness and wonders what's wrong, the part of the brain that controls my movement and speech it's like electrical works and for whatever reason it the main wire snapped so the whole electrics went wrong and the signals of my brain isn't getting to my body for my speech or for my movements in time it's not working and the neurologist said margaret your brain has to rewire that area has to rewire get strong and then all will come back together this was hard to take folks because i am an outgoing person and the symptoms that i had was problems walking involuntary movements a uh, functional seizures non-epileptic i had sleep problems and these um these were some of them that affected me and um but i praise god that he is with me in the journey that's all i can say i look to him i could have given up long ago folks but what am i turning to what what is there the god that died for me and loves me will keep me to the end and he's the one that has walked through this journey with me um it's not nice when it starts i'm i know whenever god touched me was on the 12th of november I was um, sitting, no, the 17th of November, I was up again. My whole body was like this, couldn't function. I had had enough. And um, I went in where I meet with the Lord in the Sun Lounge. And I just said, you know, Lord, I literally was weeping from my soul. And, in, and sometimes it's the groans that God hears. Sometimes you can't even pray. It's the groaning. And I says, God, I've had enough. I really have had enough. And this was only Tuesday, 12 days ago. And I said, you've got to do something. I can't even do life. 
I can't even go out and wash a dish because of the weakness in my limbs, uh, the weakness in my feet, the complete jerk, and I can't do it, God. And then I remembered myself off that verse, though you slay me, God, yet will I trust you. And I got my eyes off my problem, and I just said to my problem how big my God is, not how big the problem is, because it's nothing to God to heal me. But this is a season I'm in until he says, I'm going to heal you. But do you know what I did? I just worshipped the Lord. I just turned my complaint into praise. And why I weep is because of the goodness of God. And I mean that. I have suffered greatly four years this Christmas. I've been locked behind doors. And you might be similar. You might be depressed. Depression would come with this as well. Bouts of feeling down because you don't have strength to think straight. And you might be listening and you're in turmoil and you don't know where to turn. Can I tell you the Lord is there? He's there and he's reaching his arm out to you. He wants to lift your burden. He wants to care for you. He wants to love you and just to, to know that you are precious to him. And I turned my complete complaint into a praise, a worship. I didn't sing. I just said, Lord, I love you. You're my all. I need you. You're just my everything. And this is the honest truth. Whenever it is out and I'm going to bed or if I'm going out, I always leave notes and he's the same with me. And I came out of the room only five minutes. I came out of the room and I got a piece of paper out of our drawer and I got the pen and I'm at the desk where I was about to write, Dear lady, I'm off to bed again because there's nothing else I can do today. I'll see you later. And I got the pen and paper. This is no lie. And I says, I don't feel tired anymore. My whole jerk and movements lifted. And I felt inner strength coming into my life and my body. My limbs were strong. And I had been three months, folks, lying in bed, not fit to do anything. My limbs, everything speech the lot and I was talking normal again and I just said hallelujah God you have touched me you've renewed my strength because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they will mount up on eagles wings they will run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint and this is the truth folks I says what can I do today I headed up the stairs, I stripped two beds, I got them washed and tumbled right and put back on. I ironed, I actually cooked the first meal in the house that I hadn't done in three solid months. God had renewed my strength. You see, I turned my complaint into worship, into dependent on my Saviour. Hallelujah. And I have been great for 12 days. It has been sore on me because I can't have the strength to look after my grandchildren while Kerry works and while Rebecca works. I can only go and visit them, spend a bit of time, maybe one hour. And uh, But praise God, 12 days and counting. And my prayer is, God, it's a lasting touch. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. And the good news is, you can know that touch from the Lord. You too can experience this mm. joy that I have that mm. overrides not a ha, ha, ha happiness, but a true joy and satisfaction in mm. the Savior, the wonderful mm. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise I get excited God. with the Lord, Nathan. <laughs> I do. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's worthy praise of God. the praise, you see. Amen. No one else gets the glory. Only the Savior. Amen. And I better watch here. I could I could ruin my reputation. I could get emotional here. Yeah. Praise um. <laughs> God. Yeah. Well, you have seen it firsthand, I've Nathan, seen how it. bad I've been. I've seen it. And, you know, as a family, nice. as a family, you know what? There's, there's so many Christians out there and they will never talk about their weaknesses, will never talk about how they go through difficult times. But as a family, we have yeah. been blessed by God. Every Everyone in in, in our immediate family we're saved Hallelujah. we know where we're going we know every one of us is going to be in heaven praise the lord but i'll tell you now folks we've been in the trenches of difficult days um 
we've been there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do you know christianity christianity's not a crutch for weak people i'll tell you now it takes a real man it takes a real woman mm -hmm. whenever they're going through difficult times to not abandon god it takes a real person of faith to say do you know what i'm going to keep going with god mm -hmm. and i want to say tonight if you don't have jesus in your life you don't have anything you might have a million pound in the bank but i'm telling mm -hmm. you now you'll take none of it with you you'll take no one mm -hmm. with you the only thing you can trust in tonight is jesus christ Amen. if you have never asked him to forgive you tonight what you need to do is ask jesus to forgive you from all your sin it doesn't matter how That's much right. of it you've done doesn't matter how little of it you've done <coughs> little we've all done all it. Sinners. we've all sinned mm -hmm. just come and say god forgive me and come mm -hmm. in and live in my life and like that he'll forgive you he'll come and live Praise in your life Lord. and he'll make you ready mm -hmm. for heaven listen there's coming a day there'll be no more sickness no more pain for every christian mm -hmm. we'll go to heaven mm -hmm. and we'll be with him forever and there'll be no more suffering praise god that's right and uh, you need to have that tonight folks and unfortunately time has has left us and totally. i know that this will resonate with many people at home because i know folks out of the 500 devices on right now i know that in the majority of your homes you're all dealing with something mm -hmm. and instead of hiding it from god i want to encourage you tonight bring it to him mm -hmm. and let him sort it out you know we'll Praise be continuing Lord. as a family to take every day every week at a time it was seeming there that everything was going wrong for a while mum mm -hmm. was literally in her bed 24 7. becky fell down the down stairs the stair. katie wasn't well, well. Was house, everything yeah was going mad but you know what god sustains us and is totally. good and gives us strength and without him there's nothing else you would have to turn to some drug or something else but listen with jesus he answer, gives yeah. strength Hallelujah. for the season and i want to encourage you at home get close to jesus in these days these are days where there's so much confusion but listen to me with jesus he leads us along the way and that oh, leaves man. me one last thing to say tonight folks this new cd <laughs> that has been four years in the making hope you can see it margaret yes. johnson can i, I say will that i started it I, yeah i started it before i was sick in 2016 so it was on hold and in dribs and drabs roy was patient with me and i got it finished just before the first lockdown yes. so um roy has it ready now for if anybody wants a wee Christmas present for somebody to bless Perfect, them. perfect Christmas gift. And Kerry bought one. <laughs> so she has. <laughs> Kerry's already bought one. Yeah. And, uh, for, I don't give freebies. <laughs> for my mother-in-law. So if yeah. you would like one of these, contact Margaret. Uh, if you have her number, if you have her Facebook page. Uh, Just private whatever message way, me. Private messenger. That can be arranged. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will get them posted out to you. Mm -hmm. ASAP. Now get them quick, folks. These are gonna. There is potential here that could sell out <laughs> in an hour. And uh, there's there's mighty deals going on. You can get one Absolutely. for ten pound, two uh, for twenty pound, that's right, three for thirty pound. <laughs> um, it just gets better. But uh, <laughs> yeah, if Absolutely. you would like Go one on of the me. most recent CDs, please do get in touch. And if uh, you don't have any of her details, get in touch with myself, and I will get you in the right direction we're going to have a closing song before we end tonight thank you margaret for opening up your life to us tonight for opening up your story trust you've been blessed at home tonight we've uh, a wee bit later tonight but sure what sorry, else folks. would you be at sorry <laughs> what else would you be at sure uh -huh, eh? uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, just to say before we have our closing song on tuesday night we've got another singer on with us robin mark uh, originally from belfast and uh, back home now in Belfast. He's going to be on on Tuesday night sharing some of his songs uh, and some of his story. And then next Sunday night, we are going to be joined by Scott McNamara, who has an amazing testimony to tell. He got saved uh, a number of years back and he is now a full-time evangelist in America and uh, has seen God do great things. And so that's some of the things that are going to be happening over the next week. Margaret, do you want to just introduce this closing <clears throat> song? 
Yeah, this is um, one that's the title track, I Will Serve Thee. And basically, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change mm. anything, Nathan. Mm. I will serve the Lord every day mm. of my life. So I just pray that you've been blessed. Thank you for tuning mm. in, taking mm. the time to listen, and God bless each one of you. And if anybody does mm. want prayer or anything, and you have my number, Nathan's whatever, just feel free. Don't be alone, because Jesus is with you. That's right. Good Peace night, God. folks. Enjoy this closing song. See you all again on Tuesday night.